rely on Western support for our cultural policy. And that's coming from Dr. Phil Comey. Let's get into the details of the stories now. Legendary Ghanaian rapper Obrafo is suing popular Canadian rapper Drake for sampling his 2003 remix of We Are Henny on his song Calling My Name off the Honestly Nevermind album. In the document presented to a court in New York, Obrafo stated that Drake infringed on his copyright when he sampled his song without permission. Defendants released the infringing work on June 17, 2022, despite the fact that an agent of one or more defendants had previously contacted Obrafo seeking to obtain Obrafo's permission for the use of the copyrighted work in the infringing work. Obrafo never granted defendants permission to use the copyrighted work and the infringing work was released merely days later. Part of the document read, The Ghanaian rapper indicated that Drake and other defendants following the release of Calling My Name has greatly benefited from his work. To date, over the mere 304 days that have elapsed since the infringing works was released, the infringing work has already been streamed over 4.1 million times on YouTube, streamed over 47 million 442 160 times on Spotify, and streamed tens of millions of times on Apple Music. In addition to generating enormous sums of global streams and sales across numerous platforms, the infringing work has also been exploited by the defendant via other means, including live performance. Among others, Obrafo is seeking damages in an amount not less than $10 million. He is also seeking an injunction requiring the defendants and their agents, employees, officers, attorneys, successors, licenses, partners, and assign all persons acting in concern or participating with each or any one of them to cease directly and indirectly infringing and causing enabling facilitating, encouraging, promoting, inducing, and or participating in the infringement of any of Obrafo's rights protected by the Copyright Act. And so we can move on to our next story, and that is the Director of Policy, Planning, Research, Monitoring, and Evaluation at the National Commission on Culture, Dr. Fio Richardson Komi, has remonstrated the decision by Ghana's government to solicit financial support from foreign powers to fashion out its cultural policy. Speaking in an interview with Showbiz ATZ on Joy FM, he told Kwame Datsi that the 2004 cultural policy of Ghana was sponsored by the German government and its review is funded by the World Bank. He also, inti I beg your pardon, he also int iterated that allowing foreign influence into Ghana's cultural framework could be what Ghanaians represent. The cultural policy document is dedicated to the realization of the vision of the people of Ghana to respect, preserve, earnest, and use their cultural heritage and resources to develop a united, vibrant, and prosperous national community with a distinctive African identity and personally a collective confidence and pride of place among the community of nations. The so-called developed world are even investing in in culture. Culture, yeah. That they believe that the fact that they are even giving you access uh, um, as a scholar to to go into their country to study and all that, there are a lot of research and other assignment that you are given to do and by that they get the African and Ghanaian perspective of whatever issue that that is on board and it helps in developing their society better right and so it tells you that when it comes to culture as a country we need not to be relying on Western support yes because that is that is, that is fundamentally 
where your right and identity can because be. they can influence can be targeted. the policy exactly right? right and so we are now talking about lgbtq plus 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 and all that. and we're seeking sponsorship from them okay and so can the cultural policy today be very clear on the Ghanaian cultural stand and position mm. okay. on something like lgbtq and that was dr phil komi moving on chief executive officer of heritage development akunu dake has blamed the woes of Ghana's culture and creative industries on the lack of political will on the part of successive government to grow the sector. Dake, who spoke on Joy FM's Showbiz A to Z on Saturday, April 15th, 2023, said things are rather being done on the peripherals instead of paying critical attention to arts and culture. According to him, people in the arts are doing so well on a daily basis and that the right systems and structures would make the industry a better one. What this country needs, and from my own experience in dealing with people in governance, is that there is no political will, no political, when I say bluntly, we're doing cosmetic things, we basically are donning things, we are dealing with issues from the peripheral, culture and the arts has not been mainstreamed and the political will is just not there. And I think that Dr. Phil Kwame has mentioned it from his research and so on, from his thesis and dissertation and so on. So there is, but I don't think we should give up. I don't think we should give up. I think that many of us working from um, privately and working in the industry should continue to put on the pressure as the media is doing. Look, the media has done a lot. There's no radio station that doesn't have a, that doesn't have a cultural program or an arts program. Every weekend, sometimes almost every day, there's something, there's some discussion. There's, so the media has done its bit, has done quite a lot. It's up to the politics, to the politicians and the people in leadership to say that, look, this sector is so, so important. Let us see how we can create value. At least to create, as they typically would say, an enabling environment. That is all we need. That is all we need. An enabling environment. Because this cry has been going on for far too long. It's become so hackneying. And you just heard Akunu Dake there. Moving on. Musician Kwame Eugene has advised celebrity lookalikes to desist from taking advantage of artists and their craft in their bid to imitate them. Speaking in an interview on MX24 TV, the Lynx Entertainment signee said that fans performing songs of musicians at shows, among others, is the maximum form of disrespect. Kwame Eugene said in the past he did not have issues and even stopped his people from taking action when they initially expressed their dislike. Kwame Eugene said that although the lookalikes may be enjoying their attention, such fame is short-lived. It, it used to be fun. It actually used to be fun. Let okay. me just be real about it. Yeah. It used to be fun. Like, oh, when I pass here, there's a crime music. Like, oh, people, they cloned me. And it, it felt good from behind. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, people try to look like Michael Jackson. Yeah. And it's happened till to date. me. Till date. Elvis Presley. People yeah. try to look like him. And, and it, it feels good. I mean, I've been in the state some time ago, and I've seen... Uh, uh, his day or something and people yeah. dressing holding yeah, guitars yeah, yeah. just to look like him yeah. and it felt good from afar but i never saw one of them going on stage to go and perform now it's gotten to his songs point. and the first that's that's like maximum disrespect do, do you get what i mean yeah. it's 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 another story when you love the person and you want to represent the person on social media and all and, and it's all good but when it gets to a level where it's becoming too much you 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 and you see what's going on and you're enjoying it you get it. This is what I spoke about, about people don't care about other people. Yeah. People are just selfish. Because he's enjoying that fame and that attention at this particular time, nothing is stopping him. Until the whole thing ends bad, and then they will Is it looking it. like it's going to end bad legally? Is it looking like that? Because again, you are, you're, a machi you're a machine, right? It's not just you. There are people behind I'm, you who see everything. I'm a brand. Yeah. I'm a whole business. And I will just say, trust me, it looks good. But if you're enjoying it, it won't last. There are repercussions for everything. Let's just yes, you, 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 you. Listen, and beside me, I'm scared for them, because where I come from, they don't like that. Mm. They don't like that. 
and you just heard Ghanaian musician Kwame Eugene. Moving on, Ghanaian comedian, stage actor Foster Romanus has described comedy as the most difficult job in the world. According to him, the hardest thing to do is to make people happy and laugh at all times. It's the most difficult in the world. The most difficult job in the world. I mean, one of the hardest thing in life is to make people laugh. People you don't know, people who are sad. Someone might have lost their mom today, but it's here. You have to make the person laugh. Heartbroken hearts. You know, all diverse, you know, uh, walks of life. You still have to make sure you deliver. So, yeah, it is a, the, the most difficult job. Meanwhile, the comedian has credited reggae and dancehall act Samini for positively impacting his life as a stand-up comedian. Well, as a performer, um, I would say that um, I have been really, really, really influenced by the band Samini. Before even um, going to university to start you know, studying, etc., I used to listen to him. My confidence, my, my ability to, you know, perform as a performer on stage. I learned a lot from him and um, most of the time to his song sort of has its own way of you know getting to me. So yes and him as an individual also picks you up anytime he sees you you know gives you one or two tips here and there. So yeah Samini as an individual and as, as a brand has really you know had a, a very positive one. And that was Ghanaian comedian Foster Romanus. Moving on to the gospel space Ghanaian veteran gospel musician Nasi has shared how the society sees the music industry. During an interview with Amele Josu, he explained that the society does not see music as a business but a favor. He added that they are not willing to pay huge amounts of money to artists who come and perform at shows. I think uh, almost all the Ghanaians are, we are like church people. Mm -hmm. And some of the things that were preached to us from the beginning is uh, <laughs> it was given to you for, for free. free. So you to give it for free. Mm -hmm. So anytime a musician is trying to make money from the music, the corporate, the people, the society kind of, ah, why? Why somebody will just come and sing for 15 minutes and the person needs to be paid 50,000 or 100,000? Why? You see, so that has kind of brought us this level where people don't really kind of appreciate talent. But all the same, uh, it, it now is better than before. Now is better than before. So I think it will take time. Maybe some of us we may not benefit fully, but the next maybe 10, 20 years, yeah. those people, I mean, enjoy it more. So and definitely somebody should take the blue for somebody yes, to you know you know <laughs> and nasi also shared that he has a script ready waiting on an investor or netflix collaboration yes we have a script oh wow ready waiting for some million dollar to push mm. into it <laughs> so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i mean today i am happy to meet some in the world so definitely <laughs> after the interview yeah, uh, multimedia will help us blow the trumpet so that uh, the clarion call is you know, ongoing the for investors. Will, uh, you know, yes, you know, so that we can get the Netflix. Well, I mean, and I see uh, production oh. in collaboration with Netflix. You know, yeah, all the it big people. So good. Yeah, because seriously, uh, we have it. It's I'm really considering that. Okay, and uh, I have a passion for it because you can even you can see it in my Videos music videos. I try as much mm -hmm. as possible to. I always put myself in what I do, so why not? Some of the movie directors, they can as well cast me, so, and give me some dollars. I mean, that's interesting. I would, <laughs> I would love to see you on the screen <laughs> as, as a lead actor oh, in a movie, yes. Thank you. I'd love to I'll see that. that. And that was veteran ga gospel musician, Nat C. Let's move on. Kumawood actress Vivian Jill Lawrence has responded to claims that most actresses are currently engaging in prostitution due to the seeming collapse of the movie industry. Earlier in a viral video, actor and film producer Kwame Boga alleged that over 70% of Kumawood actresses have ventured into hookup, a modern-day term used to describe prostitution. His claim touched the nerves of some actors and even attracted a lawsuit from Messi Esiedu and her husband Nana Ajman Bidu II. 
Miracle Films CEO Mr. Samuel Nyamiche also threatened to sue the filmmaker in an earlier interview a Kumasi-based radio station had with him. In an interview, Vivian Jo issued her displeasure after her views were sought. Refuting the hookup claims, the popular actress stressed that, aside from acting, she runs a number of businesses, including selling charcoal. Yeah, no, you're the kind of you're maybe attacking at that. Hmm. Into our whole industry, you know, what can be this? Ah, that's a confirmed idea. They're attacking. Hmm. I'm a woman, Miss Amelia Juma Basa. Sure. And Jay Biana, you know, did be dear Cotema. Hmm. Now, my card be dear cheap from Kumasi to Tema. And I saw who have no amber me pencil. May you know, and I'm in a sana me who had a cry who cup. Yeah, yeah, time, you know. Wouldn't mean they too be crowd winning. No, na person can so be afraid of force to sabra, now we need me back up. No way, Jaripo. So I said, Yeah, 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 Juma Peno. I a good swa, yeah, yeah, Jumano. Yama Kwame Bogan Casa, some no name, Shanisa. If you are winning for Fubu or Munya, Juma Yaku Casa, maybe they are destiny to China. And a peck of a coin, my Juma Yunubiaba. I joy away. Some of whom to me, Casa Sana, young show deans, no, I do cash. So, so, I should have a bachelor, Baba Mandy. Okay, uh, but, but have you accepted his apology? Of course, he's okay. my son. Only the meaning in the problem, yeah. Sir Bayer, say, I'm a name who's a small kind and yeah, yeah, okay. Oh, it's never a collab, but no, no, so I became sort of saying that you need my colony penny. And you man get to be undone, so I get to Dano, and I would bring us in penny for far, no colon for her. I'm a cassabi, be very back of him. I ain't naive. And that will bring us to the end of this afternoon's bulletin. But before we go, welcome to another exciting week of Champions League and Europa League football. Betway brings thrilling promos to sports betting fans through their customer experience centers in Accra, Kumasi and Takradi. Visit any of Betway's experience centers, enjoy the games and predict the outcome of selected games and stand a chance of winning amazing prizes. Don't have enough cash to place your bets? Don't worry at all. Just visit the nearest mobile money merchant to deposit with Betway Top Up now. Take note, no under 18 bet the responsible way. Betway, bet your way. My name is Parkway C. Bannerman, and together with Anodon Production, Nana Kwame Prezimbi, and DJ Fantastic, we brought you this afternoon's bulletin. Afternoon definition continues with Najil Doku.